All right, valuation. Uh, this is a concept that is important to understand for entrepreneurs, of course, uh, and for other folks learning about corporations, because the valuation is essentially the an, an answer to the question of what's it worth? How much is it worth? This is not as clear or easy as a question as you might think, um, because the methodologies of establishing valuation are not, cl they're closer to art than science, put it that way. Uh, it has more to do with what someone might be willing to pay for your company and less to do with having some tried and true mathematical theorem that can establish valuation. So let's talk about how uh, valuation is established uh, and what valuation means. And then we'll, I'll comment a little bit on where there are potentially problems around the discussion of valuation. So, so remember, keep in mind, we're answering this question, how much is it worth? How much is my company worth? So there are different ways to establish valuation. Uh, in this case, we're going to use an example of company X that does $2 million in annual sales and has no earnings. They're losing money. So this might be a startup that's early in its uh, early in its evolution. So we've got various ways to establish uh, valuation. And these aren't the only ways. These are just uh, some of the most common ways that I've decided to talk about. The first is market comps, market comparables. And that means uh, whoever's studying your company to buy it or to invest in it might go out and look at other companies in the market and look up uh, what companies that are like yours have been valued at in the recent past. They can either use public comparables, in which case they'll go on to uh, Yahoo Finance or any other finance website and look up what uh, public companies that resemble your company are worth, uh, and or they will use um, they will use other comparable companies that are closer to you in your uh, kind of growth curve. Meaning, if there were if you're a two million dollar company and they can go look up on some of the venture databases a company that has recently been had a financing round, and they also had $2 million in sales, and they were had a similar product and were in a similar market, uh, and they can look at the valuation of that funding round and draw some soft conclusions from there. Uh, so you start to put those things together, and if you, do, you get eight or ten examples that are somewhat pertinent, you can come up with some sort of valuation. So let's say that we looked at a bunch of public market caps and some private market caps in various databases, and the market comps would tell us that this company is worth $4 million. Uh, you're a, a little, if this sounds pretty arbitrary, it's because it is. Uh, you're just you're using companies that aren't exactly like yours, so you're kind of picking them out of the air and saying, "Yeah, I'm going to put a bunch of these together, and this is about what it's worth." So there are some other ways here that we'll talk about. The next one is revenue multiples. Uh, revenue multiples and earnings multiples are very simple. It's a way of saying, "I'm going to take how much revenue this company's doing, and I'm going to multiply it by some number, and that's what the company's worth." Again, it may sound arbitrary and simple because it is. Uh, it's not a very complex way to value a company. But in this case, revenue, we're doing $2 million a year in sales. If I have a 3x revenue multiple, that means this is going to be a $6 million valuation. Uh, that's really not an uncommon way in the venture community uh, to value a company. A lot of times they do that because a company doesn't have earnings. So if a company's making a profit and it has earnings, you might uh, use an earnings multiple, which is the same thing. Except earnings multiples tend to be higher than revenue multiples because obviously, you know, profit is more valuable uh, than revenue. And profit's going to be some percentage of revenue, of course. So in this case, let's say it's a 10x earnings situation. Uh, even though they have zero earnings, that would put it at zero. Well, of course the company's not worth nothing. Uh, so an earnings multiple wouldn't really work in this case. Uh, you wouldn't really use it. But if your company had a million dollars in earnings, you could see that this would be 10 million uh, in valuation. So in this case, you probably have to use a revenue multiple uh, because company X is so young, which is the case in most venture funding companies. But earnings multiples are often used after a company is in kind of its middle stages when it's making a profit. And then uh, this one I put down here not as a joke uh, because largely that's how this is done, is sort of black magic. Uh, some VC firms and investors have their own ways of doing valuation uh, that don't necessarily have a tried and true process, but you know they find some comps, they do, they look at revenue and earnings, uh, they look at how many employees you have and of what type and how hard they are to hire, they look at where you are geographically, they look at how much debt you have, they look at a whole bunch of different variables, and then they'll come up with a valuation. Really though, valuation is a market. It's essentially whatever someone's willing to pay you per share for your company or for the overall value of your company. 
And there are two uh, terms that you should learn. Uh, we won't go into them in detail here, but the concept of a market cap and of enterprise value, uh, especially as it pertains to public companies, it's an easy way to understand them. That really goes toward what the market thinks your company is worth. Now, with private companies, of course, there's not as much liquidity, so it's hard to tell what the market thinks your company's worth. But the concept is the valuation is whatever you can really get an investor or a purchaser to agree uh, is the value of the company. That's what valuation becomes.